So Vitali Lalatin isn't a big fan of Devon Lerret's pronation lift and he believes that doing that exercise doesn't make much sense. He also thinks that Artyom Morozov and Alex Kordecha may be trying to avoid Vitali's left arm. That's why he isn't already the number one left-handed arm wrestler in the world. Hello arm wrestling fans, in this video we are going to discuss the recent interviews of Vitali Lalitin on Strong Arm channel and also Voice of Arm Wrestling channel. So link to both of these interviews will be uploaded in the description of this video. And thanks to Consistent Tank 4665 on Reddit for providing the summary of this entire interview. So Vitali said that he has started training three times a week consistently. Yes, it's kind of surprising to hear that because right now everybody is training three times a day and Vitaly has increased his training up to three times a week because before that he was casually training maybe sometimes once a week and sometimes twice a week going all out heavy every single time. Right now he's retired from his truck driver's job. I know we discussed that topic almost one and a half year ago as well on this channel when Vitaly kind of updated us about that. So he hired some truck drivers for his other trucks but at the same time we saw he was still driving a truck himself that's why he may not have gotten enough time to train and these are the words I hope Hermes Gasparini doesn't hear them but these these are true so right now he's training his wrist is 22 centimeters his peak is definitely ahead of him this is what he believes about the Hermes Gasparini match Vitali said that there is no excuse Hermes was the stronger guy, Hermes was the better guy, he had more endurance but in the future he will try to beat Hermes for sure. And by the way, I forgot to tell you guys about the second topic in this video which will be towards the later part. That is about Igor Mezurenko's comeback. Is he going to be a competition for Engin Terzi? Is he trying to be a competition for Engin while organizing the same event, not the same event but an event of his own on the same date as East versus West 12. So let's get back to topic. Georgi Svetkov. So, we kind of believed already and I al already announced it on the channel. By the way, Engin Terzi and Georgi Svetkov were talking about the Vitaly match on their podcast. They already confirmed it. They literally said that that match is going to happen on April. In April 20 at East versus West 12. But looks like this match isn't confirmed. In fact, Vitaly said that there has been no match that has been offered to him until now for April 20 card. So that's not confirmed. It's kind of surprising. That match, according to Vitaly, was supposed to happen in January. But Georgi Svetkov kind of backed out of that match. Some people are blaming Georgi for that. I, I read a few comments. But I don't think it should be like that. Because Georgi had literally the most difficult and the longest match of his entire career against Devon. Less than a month before that. So how is he supposed to be getting back in shape in such a short time against Vitaly Lalitin, who's probably going to be an equally difficult opponent for him. So Artem Morozov. Vitaly believes that Morozov could have lost that match to Alex Kordecha because he wasn't in top shape that day. Alex made few mistakes. If he didn't do them, maybe he could have won. But to us beginners and to some professional arm wrestlers as well, like Engin Terzi, it looked like Alex arm wrestled almost perfectly. He did way more than anyone expected him to do in terms of the technicalities of the of the game. So Vitaly thinks that Morozov and both Alex Kurdecha, they both are trying to maybe avoid him. They're not accepting a match against Vitaly on the left arm. That's why the match hasn't happened yet. So we already know that Vitaly's right was not 100% in past couple of years. Right now it is. It is the best that it has ever been. But that was not the same for his left arm. It has always been healthy and to see that he didn't get many matches, yes it can be because Russians were not allowed at East versus West for a very long time. But in last one year, they have been allowed to go there and still the matches didn't happen. We will never know why, why they didn't happen. But right now he's ready for both and in everyone's, literally almost everyone's eyes, Vitaly is going to be the favorite. Now the topics about genetics and steroids. Vitaly said that arm wrestling at the top level is possible without steroids. So him saying that, what does that mean? Is he still natural? Well, I will be highly doubtful about that. Not saying that he did claim to be natural, but by the way, he is speaking about it. At least he wanted to say that, in my opinion, he wanted to say that he was at the top already, at least in his class, without steroids. So does this mean that Vitaly was natural when he, when he was winning the 100 kg and I think he won the 100, uh, 110 kg class as well? when he was kind of lighter. So yes, according to him, it is possible doing that without steroids at the top level. I'm not sure if he talked about the super heavyweights or not. 
genetics he said i don't think my genetics are the best i don't think it's that much about genetics i've seen guys with longer livers than me who sometimes train equally hard or even harder they don't get the results the same results as i do maybe i just work too hard but by the looks of it training once or twice a week it doesn't look like he works too hard on the table maybe in the tournament he works really hard but not in practice for sure devon led lots of comments about devon and some comments about schoolboy people were saying that vitali was on fire in this interview some people liked it some didn't so about devon he said that his pronation lift anyone who does devon led pronation lift is kind of whack that's what the trans translation says so half of the strap is being under the thumb takes away the force from the pronator so i'm not really sure what he was trying to say here but let me let me take a guess so maybe he was trying to say that devon led does this pronation lift like like this the the buckle the strap is here on the wrist and maybe vitali is saying that i do it like this literally like this that's why it adds more on the pronation that's what i'm guessing i haven't seen the video of course it's an awesome interview over 4000 views already please check that out if you get some time so he said it, it doesn't really affect your pronator it's it's not that good of an exercise about refing vitali said that whenever i talk to the referees to adjust the grip when they are literally forcing my wrist too low the referee tells me to shut up and gives me a foul but when devon does that the referee is the one who gets blamed and everyone is on devon side so that's something that he wasn't really happy about he said the refs get a foul when when they try to mess with devon so further about devon's mental game this is another statement by vitali that hermes gasparini is not going to like for sure so these are not my words hermes if you are hearing that so he said that hermes is strong but he got dominated he got destroyed by devon in the mind games already at the press conference he was out of his mind hermes didn't know where he was what he was doing he has probably never been that scared in his life as much as he was while i'm wrestling devon and we have also discussed that multiple times on the channel you can literally go back to that channel you can see it on hermes gasparini's face in his body on his hands he's literally shaking because of nervousness i wouldn't call it fear because why would you fear anyone except maybe you can fear a loss but not the human being standing in front of you so that was nervousness it was clearly visible otherwise i still refuse to be believe that such a strong arm wrestler as hermes gasparini can get so easily beat by devon led i still refuse to believe that because hermes puts the brakes on everyone even levan saginashvili so maybe if he wasn't tired it could have been a little different he would have still lost i think but he could have stopped devon for 10 15 seconds maybe so school boy why does he keep on getting called a junior a school boy he is not a school boy anymore he is in the seniors so waf junior category used to be youth category used to be up to 21 then they changed it to 23 after covid but school boy is already 23 i guess so he is going to be competing in the seniors this time he vitali was saying that he should be arm wrestling guys like me like levan saginashvili ermes gasparini don't call him a boy anymore he is an adult now <laughs> so that's why people were saying that he is on fire Kirill Sarichev Vitali was really impressed by Kirill's strength he was saying that Kirill's riser is really strong it was stronger than me without even training that much but he trains too much for powerlifting and less for arm wrestling that's why he kind of injures himself gets tired doesn't put all of the work all of the smart work in training if he does that he is going to be a force to be reckoned with Dennis versus Hermes prediction Vitali didn't say much about that he said he doesn't know what shape Dennis Plenkov currently is in Peak Zaur versus Peak Levan he said that Zaur beat me when I was injured. So everyone was saying that well Zaur lost because Zaur won just he just won the match he's the best he deserves a shot at Levan. But when I beat Zaur in a comeback when I was healthy and he was injured everyone is saying that well Zaur lost because he was injured. So that's kind of unfair to Vitali as well. Then he said something disheartening for many of the Amnesling fans. I didn't care about that much. When he when he was asked about Alan Zolaev who can beat him. He said he probably doesn't know. maybe he doesn't even know who alan i think he knows but he doesn't know what level he is at and where he is arm wrestling he said he doesn't care he's a, he's an hobbyist he's a hobbyist he's not an arm wrestling fan at least not right now but he's a full time arm wrestler now that's kind of a strange future left handed matches ivan matichenko alijan moratov alex kordecha artem morozov is number one priority morozov is number one so these were the highlights from the interview please check that out and world arm wrestling world arm fight championship 2024 in Dubai this is what Igor Mazurenko has announced he was in Dubai a few months ago as well and he's making a comeback after a couple of years i think the last match that igor organized was 
between Vitali and Krasimir. Maybe he did something after that as well. The Alex Krodecha versus Hermes Gasprini match that was also organized by Igor. So these, this is what the poster said. The first arm fight will begin with girls 57 kg class right-handed. He'll be announcing the names of the girls very soon. Eight strong girls will fight in a new format. It's going to be a new format on April 20. Now that's the interesting thing. April 20. Why would Igor Mazurenko choose that date knowing that East versus West is on the same date? Well, it's clear that he literally cannot do anything at the level that is going to even bother East versus West at this time. Nobody is going to even notice that Igor is, going, Igor is doing something on the same date. But still, there are questions, why would he do that? Is his intentions trying to step on Engenter's toes? I said this on Paul Italia's podcast as well today that people are friends in arm wrestling. They kind of avoid stepping on each other's toes as long as there is no profit in arm wrestling. As, long, as soon as there is some profit, they will organize events on the same day trying to trying to curb down the opponent's potential. And Igor was running a professional profitable arm wrestling league back in 2018. That's insane. Nobody was doing that at that time. He literally sold almost 9 10 thousands pay-per-views for the... This is what I heard. Don't quote me on that. For the Devon versus Dennis super match. And that was $30. It wasn't beat until East versus West 4 or 5 or maybe King of the Table 4 beat it in terms of the revenue earned by pay-per-view sales. It's just a rumor that I heard. So Igor Mezurenko knows what's up, but at this time, WL also making a comeback. So maybe he wants to team up with WL. Maybe these two can do something together. Otherwise, he's going to literally get crushed by Angin Terzi and King of the Table. He literally doesn't stand a chance. Thanks for watching. Like the video and subscribe.